primeiro lugar, gostaria de dizer que é um prazer enorme. First of all, I would like to say that it is a tremendous pleasure to be with you at this meeting of the International People's Assembly and to share with you the viewpoint of the MST of this very important moment in Brazil. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the MST that has worked for um, agrarian reform and urban reform, which has brought so much benefit to the Brazilian people. I'd like to bring up two questions. The first is about US imperialism in terms of uh, modern times. I believe that we must address the economic and uh, uh, political and health crisis the world is experiencing in order to see that these asymmetrical relations that continue to prevail in the world, uh, the asymmetrical relations between nations, and we must discard these four relations that will bring about the development of our peoples, bring about self-determination, national sovereignty. These are principles enshrined in international texts, such as those of the United Nations. And these should become a reality. Each and every kind of asymmetrical relationship in the concert of nations must be overcome. And I will go beyond this. I would say that if the United States of America is, has always been smart enough to defend its own interests, then they must understand that their relationship with Latin America must change. No longer can they maintain a relationship of subservience of our governments. Uh, we can't either be subservient or enemies of the United States. This is part of the pattern of US relations with countries of Latin America, but this must be left behind to open the way to a different type of relationship that is worthy of the 21st century. We can no longer be prisoners of the types of relationships that prevailed in the 20th century. This is particularly true of the 20th of Latin America. The world can no longer be subject to these types of relationships. And this brings me to the second question, which is vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, role of China. China, unlike Japan, uh, that did not have any military power after World War II and had to accept a series of agreements uh, uh, through the 1980s that affected the Japanese economy. But despite these, uh, uh, the time that has gone by, these are still in effect. China is different. It's a country of more than 1 billion population that has military strength. And unlike uh, Russia or the Soviet Union, rather, uh, that did not have economic uh, power, no, it now has. Uh, uh, Russia, Soviet Union only had military technology, but China has, uh, the Soviet Union had military technology to challenge the United States, but it did not have the technology that it needed to challenge the United States in the economic realm. So now China is a combination of what the Soviet Union had been and what Japan had been. Uh, so. Uh, let's talk about the Cold War with China. Uh, we are looking at the correlation of forces and we're talking about a different world. We no longer have the bipolar world of post-World War II. So now we have to see that we have to coexist with the hard geopolitical reality that we actually had uh, gone beyond many years ago. It has been a long time since the international scene has seen a dispute of mil for military hegemony between the two superpowers on the planet. So we can no longer think of a Cold War like this question asks us there is a different correlation of forces that is going to prevail in 
relations between nations moving forward. So we can also make good use of the unique situation in Brazil and take advantage of this new multilateral world in order to defend our national interests. This could even be combined with the movement that goes back to the first question that I would suggest. A region of the Americas free of oppression uh, that is has sovereignty, that has no room for imperialism, a uh, region of the Americas with self-determination that is decolonized and is free, in which our peoples feel free. So thank you for these five minutes. Those are the considerations that I wanted to share with you. And I thank you very much for the opportunity to participate and uh, make this very quick contribution.